First and foremost, fuck George Carl. Like, let's just get that out the way. Like, fuck him and the horse he rode in on. After, sh after shoot around, call me to his room and tell me, hey man, like I think you overrated. The first, the first shoot around, he come to me and say like, look man, I think you overrated. I, we have a lot of work to do. So, yeah, you remind me of, uh, I, I see your role on this team. <laughs> You're more like Detlef Shrimp. <laughs> nah, get the fuck out of here. No, this is where it's born. This is, <laughs> this is a fact. What up YouTube? It's your boy So Crazy TV back with another video don't forget to like share and subscribe hit the notification bell for more videos in this video george carl goes in on carmelo anthony carmelo anthony responds on his podcast 7 p.m in brooklyn and then Kenyon martin on gills arena explodes on george Carl. we're gonna unwrap everything and we're gonna get into it we're gonna get after it you already know, man. I appreciate y'all, and I love y'all, man. Roll to 4K. Let's get straight to it. The minute that I knew we wasn't going to work out, or we was going to have issues, the first day he got the job, he got the job a couple days before we played Milwaukee Bucks. So the whole thing was, I'm not coaching no game. I, my first game, I wanted to be against Milwaukee Bucks. Cool. Go back home. They fucked you over over there. I, I know the business. I know the game at the, you know, and I, I really don't know the game when he came to the team. It's, I'm 21 now. Mm. All I know, I got a big name coach coming. George Carr, Coach Milwaukee, Coach Seattle, Gary Payton. You know what I mean? All, all of that. <clears throat> we get to Milwaukee after, sh after shoot around, call me to his room and tell me, hey, man, like, I think you overrated. Like, I, I, you have a lot of work. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. First sentence? Listen. Nah. 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 Look at this. Look at this. want to look at you, B. No. Yo. Nah, yo. Nah. Hey, George Carl, watch your fucking mouth, man. Yo, hey, bro. Bro. No, no he, he, started, he started that narrative, though. Like the defensive narrative. But I'm going to get to that point. The first, the first shoot around. He come to me and say, like, look, man, I think you overrated. We have a lot of work to do. I know I ain't. You know what I mean? I know I got a lot of work. I got a long way to go in this league. But my nigga, I, you just got here. You just got here. Like, you don't need to ask no questions. of like, who's who? What's what? What's going on? What's the vibe? Individual meetings with every player to introduce yourself. You ain't do none of that yet. You called me. Told me I was overrated. Looked at him. All right. So yeah, you remind me of, uh, I, I see your role on this team. <laughs> You're more like Detlef Shrimp. <laughs> nah, get the fuck out of here. No, this is where it's born. This is, this is a fact. First of all, let me say this. I'm so glad that Carmelo Anthony has his own podcast. He can speak his own piece. You know what I'm saying? For many years, there was coaches that came and said something about Carmelo, especially George Carr, man. So basically what Melo is saying is like when George Carl first got there, brought Melo into the office and was like, hey, man, I think you overrated, man. I think you I think you remind me of deadlift shrimp. That is so disrespectful, man. This dude, third pick in the draft, 2003, man, could have went second. Dude went to the playoffs every year he was in Denver, every year. Rookie year, he could have had that rookie of the year, but LeBron James, bro, like took it. But that's controversy because Melo averaged more than LeBron James and took his team to the playoffs. Kenya is going to speak about this, but look at the picture, y'all. Look at how George Carl is embarrassed to stand next to Melo. That is embarrassing. Your own coach despising you like that and George Carl always been like this to his stars he always been a guy like this he reminds me of Jerry Krause in Chicago that's who he reminds me of because he wants all the love the, the players get the love man the players are the ones sacrificing the most man and Melo speaks about how the narrative started with George Carl and I believe him man and I'm glad he has a podcast to speak about it. Speak your facts, Melo. You see Joe Budden. You see, you see Kid Murrow laughing. But it's not a laughing matter. 
He's speaking facts, y'all. Let me know in the comments what y'all think about what Melo said. We're going to go on to Kenyon because he dropped a nuclear bomb on George Carl. Let's get into it. First and foremost, fuck George Carl. Right, let's just get that out the way. Like, fuck him and the horse he rode in on. How can a guy that was in the third pick in the draft that should have won rookie of the year that led his team to the playoffs as a rookie, you come in in his second year, how is that guy overrated when you get there? Yeah, that's like, like, no, I, I, these are facts, bro. Okay, so that's what I, mean, I was, I was. This is real time, dog. I was there, so you ain't got to look that shit up, Gil. I was there. Okay, okay. Right? Just looking like we. No, I was there. Right? Melo was in the second year when George got the job. Twenty, if twenty games in, when George got the job, led his team to the playoffs the year before, as a rookie. And most of the basketball world thinks that LeBron James got Carmelo Anthony Rookie of the Year trophy at home. Mm -hmm. LeBron had a hell of a rookie year, but Melo led his team to the playoffs as a rookie. So, in the Western Conference, it was a lot harder at the time. Mm -hmm. So, how is this guy overrated? Yeah. And how you comparing? So you are so coming in right, and this is he did it there. He did it to Boogie. He did like this is. You got your mind made up about guys before you step in the building. You already think, you already got this shit, what, okay, you got the job, so now, oh, this is what I think. So no, you already got your mind made up, these preconceived notions about who you think a person is and how you're going to deal with them and how their game is, how to fit with you. Like, no, it ain't fucking about you, dude. It's not. It's not about George. Shit is about the players, man. Like, you benefited from us, from our talent. Since, like I, I said it then, like when the shit first came out, if you think he overrated and we such bad people and bad basketball players and this, that, and the third, forfeit them fucking wins. Forfeit them. Because we such bad people. Who led, who, how we get to the playoffs every year? It wasn't because of you, dude. We made the playoffs every year. It wasn't because of you. We talent got us there. Nigga, you, we got there in despite of you. Like, you a handicap to us. Mm -hmm. If we had a different coach, we win a championship. You were handicapping us as a fucking team because you think you more important than us. No, nah, dude. And for you to be still going, whoever's writing it, whoever's writing it. And I don't want to go <laughs> keep going it because I could take this to a whole different place. But it would, it'll be ugly of me. Mm -hmm. Right? But do need to chill. Whatever it is, you telling Melo don't do it. Dude, you started this shit. He's in the space now to tell his side of the story. He not telling anything that the public wasn't thinking at the time. Mm -hmm. He just putting clarification to it. And because you such an asshole and a no good ass person, you taking it personal when the man telling the truth. Right, the truth sound like hate. Mm -hmm. The truth sound like you're going at people when the shit hit home. Like, nah, these are facts. This man came in and laughed. We laughed about the Dallas Sheriff shit. The shit was hilarious. <laughs> now, Kenya Martin always voiced his opinion on George Carl. He always said he hated the guy. He always said that the guy was trying to be above all you know what i'm saying above the gm probably above the owner because he said that in gills arena already i didn't heard this from Kenyon, but the other stuff he basically fact checked what Melo said you know that debt lift shrimp stuff you know they laughed about it but george carl did write a book man he did write a book Kenyon is not lying about that and we all know that and the info in that book about Melo, the narratives and everything that started. He's basically saying he started off by saying F George Carl, you know, and they went to the playoffs. How is Melo overrated when Melo took the team to the playoffs every year? He could have won rookie of the year. He shed a light on how LeBron James won rookie of the year. And that's Melo's trophy. That's facts, man. He shed a light on how disrespectful George Carl was to everybody, how he treated everybody, how he wanted to be above everybody, and how 
Um, they could have won the championship if they had a different coach. He's speaking facts, man. He's speaking facts. I always wondered why this team couldn't make it over the hump. And this is why, man. When you got a coach that treats their players like this, disrespects them in the media, says something about them, like it's crazy, and it could kill the chemistry on the team. That's facts, bro. And what Kenyon is speaking about and what Melo is speaking about, they're both speaking their facts, bro. And Kenyon is basically fact-checking everything that Melo said. Melo basically said this happened to all his superstars, man. Every superstar that George Carl coached, he basically told them they're either overrated or they didn't like the star power that they had. Melo had that star power in Denver. And that's basically what Kenya Martin is saying. They went to the playoffs every year. They did that, and they could have won over the hump if they didn't have George Carl. He's speaking his facts, man. How can you disrespect your star player, bring him into the office, and tell him that he's overrated off rip? Basically in practice, like before the game, how can you even do that? That's disrespectful, bro. And to compare him to someone that he don't even play like. He don't play like Deathlift Shrimp, man. Melo's a first ballot Hall of Famer, man. At that time, George Carl didn't know that. We didn't know that. Okay. But still, to disrespect your player like that, Melo was that dude, man. Denver went to the playoffs every year. They went to the Western Conference Finals, and they only lost because they went up against the Mamba, Kobe Bryant. Rest in peace, man. Now, if they would have played and went to the Finals and would have played Orlando, I have no doubt that Denver would have took that, man. Denver had a team. Even with all the roster changes and whatever like that, they still made a jump to the playoffs every season when they had Melo, Kenyon Martin, J.R. Smith, and Nene, bro. They had a squad. Marcus can be as well. Y'all let me know in the comments what you think, man, about what George Carl said. Carmelo responding on his podcast and Kenyon Martin destroying and ethering George Carl, man. If you made it this far into the video, that means you a real one, and I do appreciate you. Now, I got George Carl's tweets up on the screen. He basically said, hey, Mellow, man, you talking about something that happened 20 years ago. That's how he started them tweets. And then he disrespected Mellow by showing the deadlift shrimp, saying deadlift shrimp was this and that, and then saying should Denver honor Mellow and made a poll. This dude's a troll, bro. And then he going to tag Melo in all them tweets, all them posts. And then he's going to say that Jokic is the best number 15 ever in Denver. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this, man. This dude, George Carl, is a troll. He's basically looking like a clown, dog. And he's been doing this since he wrote his book, basically. Y'all let me know what y'all think. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Road to 4K. We ain't going to stop this grind for nobody, man. I love y'all. Peace and love, family. Until next time.